All right, so um, let's talk about this. There was this uh, motion that unless the Auditor General's report, uh, unless the uh, Prime Minister and Cabinet's report into Bridget McKenzie was released publicly, that Labor, the Greens and some of the crossbench uh, were going to make sure that Matthias Cormann could no longer serve in his position effectively as the leader of the Senate and to represent the Prime Minister in the Senate. Essentially, he'd sort of have to go into the naughty corner for a little while. Um, Penny Wong uh, had a bit of back and forth about this today. Eventually, thanks to the good people of One Nation, this thing was defeated, but only by one, void, uh, one vote. Is this really the hill you want your credibility to die on? All your years in this place, all your efforts to bring integrity to this place, going up in smoke to protect a man who would never do the same. Those proposed sanctions are completely unprecedented. Completely unprecedented. In any event, even if the Senate had this power, it would be an abuse of power to use it. So, Pauline, what the hell was going on here and uh, why were you willing to sign the document but not vote for the idea? Right. It was presented to me yesterday by um, Senator Patrick and originally in, they wanted Matisse Cormann to be banned from the Senate for the autumn sittings. I said, this is ridiculous. I said, you can't do that. They said, OK, we'll actually go and see what we can do about it. Then they brought it back to me and they said, OK, well, this is what we've done. Overnight, it did concern me, and I said, OK, you want to get these documents to do with the sporting um, affairs, and they wanted the documents, um, cabinet doc documents uh, uh, presented into the parliament, which they have been unable to get, so they thought they'd pull this. What happened overnight was that I was contacted this morning by Sterling Griff, who was concerned about it. He didn't agree with it, and then I had um, contact with Rebecca Sharkey, also from the same party as, as Senator Patrick, and she came to speak to me and she said, look, this is not good, it's unprecedented, we don't think it's the right thing, way to go about it. So then, after advice, consultation, talking to different people, and then I realised it is unprecedented, and uh, then I informed the Labor Party that I would be withdrawing it, I, my support for it, that I would not be voting for it. I told Rex Patrick that, I told Jackie Lambie that. So that's when the debate happened on the floor of Parliament. And Paul, let me go back to the reason why I ended up getting in politics in the first place was in 1994, the council in Ipswich threw out the mayor. Now, he was elected by the people, and I was furious about that. I said, how could a council throw out an elected mayor by the people? So hence, I got involved and I stood for, for local government. That's how I got involved in politics. So what was happening in the floor of parliament today is exactly why I stood up and thought I'd get involved in, in politics. So on principle, it's not right. The people elected Matisse Cormann. It is the people who will tell him if he can't go back on the floor of parliament because I don't want this to set precedent. Yeah, look, I, I mean, in, in all your time leading the Senate and then being around the Senate, Stephen, had you even heard of something as ridiculous as this, as well-meaning as the concept of producing the documents and all the, the concept that the person who represents the government, most notably in the Senate, have to sit on the naughty corner? Um, has that ever been tried when you were in charge? Look, look, I suspect this is a much closer vote than even you've suggested. I, I think if you get a wide pan of the camera shot into the chamber, you'll find Liberals restraining Matthias Cormann from actually voting for the resolution because <laughs> the <laughs> prospect of not having to sit through a week of Senate estimates answering questions from the opposition... I, I, I am shocked he did not cross the floor. But come on, how so would you feel? Be being but hang on, how would you feel if the Libs, One Nation, Centre Alliance tried to pull this on you when you were the, 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 the PM's representative up there? Look, the question of whether or not this document should be produced. I mean, Pauline agrees it should be produced. Uh, and the government's refusal to table this document... Sure, sure, sure. Just, but this is... Come on. Where KK shows... and Penny Wong are taking your party is into stunts done by a senator who's... Uh, you know, by, by Rex Patrick, which is fine, or the Greens. I mean, this is stunt stuff. Like, why is your party involving itself in this garbage? Because the Labor Party believes that the government should be accountable for the information the and for gone. the decisions that it makes. Yes, but the Labor Prime got the has forty percent of the money the too, mate. Pri the Prime Minister, don't try and pretend there was a fair distribution here, Paul. That oh, sorry, be, sorry. If it was a fifty-fifty rort, then it's okay. Be, when it's a sixty-forty rort, it's absurd. a rort. 
No, this was, this was a wrought, Paul, and I know last time we discussed it, it was, oh, no, look, it's OK, everyone does this, that's all fine. Uh, but it's not fine, and when the minister is so ambitious, but the Prime Minister keeps quoting from this to defend the program and defend his actions, and what he should be is accountable and just table this piece of advice, because... Phil Gagens isn't a lawyer. Phil Gagens is a former chief of staff. Having said that, Phil is actually an excellent public servant as well. But <laughs> I wouldn't... I would want to see the basis on which he concludes the opposite of the independent Auditor-General. So he didn't just clear... He didn't just find the technicality that we all knew was there. Phil Gagens actually opined on the program. Stephen. And he, he should be accountable for that. And the Prime Minister, hiding behind Phil Gagens' secret report, <laughs> does not speak well for the Prime Minister. Now, the whole reason why some of those uh, MPs were apparently meeting, apparently talking uh, behind Elbow's back was about uh, tactics that, particularly in the Senate, the Labor Party was too close to the Greens. Corey, you're the man who can call it uh, down the middle? <laughs> Seriously. Oh, yeah, I, I admire Stephen how he went from not answering the question. He's still to, got skills. Uh, I'll give it. He's a retired attacking, boxer, but he can yeah, still have a swing. The government. I, one point, though, is that um, I'll stand corrected on this, but Rex Patrick loves these sorts of stunts, and I think he tried it once before against George Brandis because he spoke to me about it, and I can't remember whether I supported it or not, so I don't want to be called a hypocrite. Oh, but that was driven oh, by oh. George. That was driven by George Brandis's complete contempt for all those of us uh, uh, in his own party and uh, on the crossbench. Mm -hmm. But you've um, got to run against your I record just, here. This is the problem. You've yeah, got a you record so, now. So I, I'm, I'm really not sure, but <laughs> it's, it is. I'm pleased it didn't succeed because it would have prevented Matthias Cormann from a estimates, which he might be thankful for. But he wouldn't be able yeah, to sit I'm on seriously. that front bench <laughs> as the leader, and he'd have to speak from the back bench. Um, so it's a really weird motion. Well, I'm glad. Uh, I think it's good that it was, didn't yeah, get up. Good on you, Pauline. Another bit of common sense uh, uh, against some of the nonsense going on down there.